Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I understand that you had a late lunch, and um, so I hope that you know it was not too filling that you have. Uh, you can you know um, pay attention somewhat to my slides. Um, I would like to keep this interactive, meaning that you know if you have a question before I move on to the next one, um, please. Um, interrupt and just you know ask me because IP rights can be a bit dry so let's try to make this more interesting so um, for today's talk the focus is more on creative way to monetize and value the IP rights I would like to keep this very relevant to the creative industry um, therefore, the focus is not so much on the procedure because the procedure is something that you can actually look up on the website. This is the Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia. Just a background, we are a statutory body. We are in charge of all the um, IP rights registration strategy as well as policy for the government. So what I would like to focus on is to make it really simple that when it comes to IP rights, whether your creative content, your product, anything that you create from your ideas, remember these three things, which is to uh, seek, strategize, and sell. Because whatever ideas that you have, the hours that you spend creating, you need to actually make money out of it, correct? Yes, no, no money? Do it for, you know, I mean, for the creative side, yes, for the creativity itself, but, but you actually need to actually monetize the IP rights so that there is an economic benefit to all the, to all the time that's put in. <clears throat> okay, the first is to seek. Seek meaning is to actually look um, what are the IP rights that any of the content that you created, for example, IP rights is something that benefits the business from start to end. IP can be used to raise financing. You can use it to you know, get grants. And I'm sure um, there are numerous grants even from MDEC, you know, My Creative Ventures. And um, the portion of the IP right can be licensed because IP itself is something that you can share. It is costly to protect, but if you have partners, you can actually use it to license it, license it out. You can assign it, you can sell it. And most importantly, in when it's difficult, in difficult times, meaning that you know, if you have um, some issues with your business and you need actually to cut certain portion of your business out, you can sell it together with your IP rights and um, make more money in terms of you know um, salvaging your business. So IP rights benefit a business from the beginning right to the end. And IP rights are everywhere. Um, is there anyone here that thinks that whatever that you do, creative or not, that you do not have any IP rights? Please raise your hands. Everyone says, agrees that you do have IP rights, right? Everything that you do would have some kind of IP right. I mean, go down the list. You would have at least four or five of those that's listed, correct? So all that is IP rights. So even IP rights, you would have a bundle of IP rights, not even just one IP. Um, so IP is very relevant um, to your industry. For example, smartphones, everyone has a smartphone. A simple smartphone itself has four types of IP rights in it. One is the design itself of the, of the phone. Second is the technology behind it, which is patented. That's a different IP. And um, another one is the branding, whether it is Apple, whether it is Samsung, um, that's all the branding, so that is trademark. And the copyright itself is the apps that you create. That is a separate right on its own. And even the apps, there's at least a couple of rights in it because the branding of the apps, for example, uh, WhatsApp, that is a branding on its own. So that will be another IP right. So you're talking about multiple IP rights in anything that you create. Sorry. So these are basically trademarks. I mean, you recognize all this is from the branding, right? 
these are branding. For example, Coca Cola it has a few um, IP rights. The trademark itself, the design of the bottle, as well as, as well as the trade secret, meaning the formula itself. So each one of these has more than one IP right. This is something that we'll share with you. It's a summary of all the IP rights that will be relevant to you. Um, we're talking about patents, industrial design, trademark, and also um, copyrights. So, as you can see, generally for um, generally for patents, patents, industrial design, and trademark, it is territorial in nature. It is territorial in nature, meaning that meaning that uh, for industrial design itself, trademark and also patent, it is only protected in the country that you register it in. Meaning for trademarks for your branding, um, you know you have uh, for example content and your company has branded it under your company's business and you file for trademark in Malaysia, you only have protection in Malaysia only. So, for example, your competitor can register a similar mark, let's say, in Singapore, Brunei. So, if you want to go into that country and have a business there, you would have to register a trademark there. So, for industrial design, trademark, and, and also patent, it is territorial. Whereas for copyright, it is worldwide. Meaning, whatever, if you have a book and you have written it, um, and you have protected it under copyright, you have the rights around the world. So that is only applicable for copyrights. Any questions? Any questions on this? Yes, Izan. Sorry? In Incentives, you mean monetary incentives? Um, well, I know, if I'm not wrong, um, there's, any, there's a rep from MDAC here, right? I do know that there is um, trademark filing, copyright filing, funding from MDAC, if I'm not mistaken. Is that MDAC rep? Sorry. Um, well, um, aside from MDAC, we also have, um, well, it's not, it's not, um, it's not, it is not so much a particular incentive on its own. There are a few types of incentive when it comes to filing in Malaysia. There's also a tax incentive, meaning that if you're an IP um, owner, I believe that there's some tax exemption when it comes to the filing of your taxes. That's one. Uh, for MyPo itself, we have a small fund that assists entrepreneurs with filing for the first time. I was coming to that at the last part, but yes, we do have that. That's, that's a monetary incentive. I know that um, in MDAC, they used to have, or they still have, um, funding for trademarks and copyrights. But again, the important thing is not so much, I mean, incentive provided that you want to have a business here in Malaysia. Um, for IP rights, it's important to know that if you want to have a presence here in the country, or you want to have a presence, for example, in Singapore, then you need to do your filing in which country you're going to actually expand your business. Because it makes no sense, honestly, if you have no presence in Malaysia, let's say Malaysia is just your production, but you're actually selling your customers, um, cus uh, customer list, your target audience is in another country, then you wouldn't need to spend money in that pati particular country because you would have no presence there. So incentive, money street incentive, the only thing that I know is that you know MDAC has, MIPO has a small fund. Um, and it's also embedded in some of the grants. For example, MTDC, they do have numerous grants and also loans. So a portion of it is gone, it will go into IP rights protection. So it's not carved out on its own. Uh, but I think that you know it's good that um, more incentives, if there's a need, it should be, you know, especially um, going abroad. Um, this goes back to the strategy. When I said that first is to seek, that means you actually look at your content, you look at your product, you look at what you have, 
and you decide what IP rights you want to protect, but you cannot protect everything, which is similar, is what you know goes on to what Izan said, because you need incentive. It is not cheap to file for IP rights. In Malaysia, it is not that costly because it's in ringgit, but if you look at going to uh, European countries or you go to any other, you know, even Australia, Singapore, you're talking about a higher exchange rate and you have to actually use um, IP agents in that country and that will be costly. So the next thing that you do after identifying what kind of IP rights you have is to have a strategy. Talking about strategy is that um, all these countries, I mean all these companies that started, small companies, they have a strategy from the start because you cannot be filing all over the world because your cash flow will not be able to sustain that. So these are some of the successful entrepreneurs and they have actually looked at IP rights portfolio from the very start. So, you know, IP is your main asset, especially in the creative and tech industry. So, so you would need to identify the kind of IP that you have and strategize which country you want to go in first or which IP you want to register. I'll give you an example. For example, Trademark. Trademark itself has 45 classes. So, take it that you do it on your own in Malaysia. One class would cost you around 970, provided you do it on your own, without an IP agent. You're talking about, you know, four or five classes, it would eat into your cash flow, correct? That's only one country. But let's say you want to have a presence in Singapore, you would like to have a presence in Brunei, you would like to have a presence in um, Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, all the creative hubs. That will be really, really costly. So you will need a strategy. <clears throat> so like this, this is an interesting story because she actually um, did her first I, uh, patent on her own just to save costs. And it was a strategy to do the first one on her own. Then when she expanded, only then she used um, IP agents and IP lawyers. And um, sorry, just to go back to what I said about strategy, um, one part, one way of strategizing for the creative industry, I believe, is that from experience, you can um, carve out certain IP rights in your own country and you go into a collaborative effort with another counterpart in other country and you get them to register IP rights in some other country. So that's a way of reducing costs. Um, I'll discuss more in the other, uh, in the other slides. So these are ways to enhance IP rights, you know. Um, you, um, there's milestones in um, looking at the IP issues. You must invest IP protection both locally and, and overseas. Uh, you need to make an inventory of the IP assets that you have. So these are ways to enhance it. And um, what's interesting about IP rights is that we always just assume that IP rights is just the filing of, uh, for example, if you are a um, production house, you're looking at your movies and your scripts, and you think that's all there is when it comes to IP rights, correct? And you're looking at copyrights and trademarks. But IP rights is more than that. IP rights involves also things like making sure that your employees do not run away with your IP, right? You know, when you start off, you have ideas, you create together, then you find halfway where you're successful, that someone that you, actually, uh, for example, you know, appoint to do um, some of the production or the script for you, you find them working with a competitor, correct? Does that happen? Is that something that's common? You find that you lose employees to someone else? That is part of IP rights because the creativity belonging to that person is something that you want to capture. You want to make sure that they do not go and you know um, work with a competitor at least a few years or use your idea that you have in your business to grow with someone else. So you need to protect that. And um, I believe that is something that happens to most of our smaller industry where you actually pitch to bigger organization, whether it is, you know, um, broadcasting houses or production houses, when you go out there and pitch, you share everything without signing a non-disclosure agreement, right? 
Because they will say, you know, forward me your, um, some demo tape, for example. Forward me some information. And you do that willingly because someone as big as, for example, Disney or Cartoon Networks is willing to sit and listen to you, right? When you do that, you actually give away your idea. And you find that you may not get the work, but someone's using the exact same thing in producing something else. And you find that that's also losing your IP rights. That is strategizing to ensure that the IP that you created belongs to you. So, um, come up with a non-disclosure agreement, for example. See, NDA when discussing with potential partners and investors. Make it simple. It doesn't have to be 20 pages. It can just be half a page. Even things that you email out, those basic things in protecting your IP, have a two-liner to say that it belongs to you. All that are simple things which you can do. I mean, you're all smart people, so put that in. It doesn't have to be something that, you know, you have to go through, you know, lawyers to negotiate and consult upon. You can do basic things just to ensure that all the rights that you have remain within your company and your business. Um, for example, employees. You cannot stop an employee from leaving you. But you can stop them from using the exact same thing that they have created for you with someone else. You can put that in. You can put that in in your employment agreement, for example. You can make that to be part of your standard operating uh, procedure within your company. All that can be done. <clears throat> And of course, registering the key brands, like I said, 45 classes, choose one class to start with, file it on your own, you have one trademark that you file on your own. As you grow bigger, do more, but start it right so that you don't have someone else filing something which you have not protected at all. That's even worse. <clears throat> and copyright, copyright recorder is very cheap in my book. It is a minimum between 50 ringgit to 150. Do that, you know, at the very least, do a copyright recorder. Okay, you do not have to go to lawyers again. These are basic things that you can do on your own. And there's enough information out there for you to do it without having to spend, you know, a few thousand ringgit open, um, appointing lawyers. I'm sorry if I'm offending any lawyers here, but I was practicing. So uh, for, pa for patents, it's a bit more difficult. But, you know, I believe that um, as entrepreneurs, when they start off, they have to start it. If they start it on their own, when they actually expand bigger, they would definitely need um, legal advice, but not at the start yet. <clears throat> um, industrial design. Industrial design is very relevant to the creative industry, meaning for your merchandising. You know, your characters, the, the, the movie, um, your storyline, your movie characters, your anim animation, cartoons, all that that you want to sell as part of merchandising, protect it under industrial design. Again, that's not as expensive as trademark also. Um, you know, invest in getting IP agreements drafted. Investment here is that use your lawyer friends if you have, you know, ask them to assist you with simple boilerplate clauses. Google some of these agreements as a start. It's important that you have something as opposed to nothing. Okay. See, seeking IP protection may be costly, but there are ways for you to reduce the cost. And but what is worse is that if you do not protect it, and you act in eventually someone else uses your IP rights, and um, for you to rectify it, meaning you have to go to court, you have to act, um, seek you know legal advice, you have to do a lot more. That it may even be more costly than doing it right from the start. So this is just a few points that you know it's important that you remember if possible. IP rights is an important asset. It is the foundation for you to get profits. Um, there's legal way to enforce it. You can separate your IP rights from your tangible rights and it is something that you can deal with like any other assets. And lastly, from the six strategize and lastly, you want to make money because you already spend time into you know creating your IP rights. You have put in a correct strategy. Now it's time to make money. <clears throat> Ways to monetize IP. You can use it in your own market. You can um, have a new market, new range elsewhere. 
you can license it. Um, I have better examples in the slides after this. Um, franchising, merchandising, all this is part of monetizing IP. Collaboration, co-branding, going to GV, going to R&D, then to sell it also, as in you know outright sale or sell it in portion, mergers and acquisition, and you can even use IP rights for settling litigation cases. And lastly, is to use IP as part of a collateral. That's really interesting because that's IP financing. <clears throat> sale, these are outright sale. You know, we, we talk about, you know, Facebook buying WhatsApp, for example, you know, um, Disney and things like that. So, all these um, outright sale of IP rights, you know, Disney buying Lucasfilm, for example. It is no, not so much a tangible asset. There's no tangible asset. There's no buying over a factory. It's buying over the branding as well as all the IP that is attached to it. <clears throat> Again, this is a IP right outright sale. You know, um, it was you know sold in for just um, ten million in two zero zero one. Then the branding of Jimmy Choo actually um, was really um, it was it was a couture uh, branding, and you know it was actually sold later on in two zero one one. Ten years later, for five hundred million pounds. So. Um, it is an outright sale, but once you sell your rights, you must remember that you yourself cannot use it. So, sometimes it's good to have an outright sale, sometimes it's good to do something else. Okay, um, what's interesting that I find that when it comes to the creative industry, as opposed to maybe even any other industry, biotech and even tech, when it comes to the creative industry, you're able to change format, meaning that you know, you can start off with writing a book like Harry Potter. Then you can license it and I mean, you can evolve it and have movies and DVDs. There's a new set of IP rights. From books, you go to movies, there's another set of IP rights. Then you can have merchandising. You can have all the things that, you know, the cloak, the, the, the spears, the weapons. All that is part of merchandising. That's a new type of IP rights. And now there's a theme park. The theme park itself, again, is a new type of IPRAC. So, when it comes to the creative industry, you can actually evolve from one format to another. <clears throat> Even our local Dato' Lat started off with books. Then, um, there's the animated series, merchandising. And he actually licensed, not only that, what he did was even more interesting. He actually licensed his paintings and drawings, I mean, his cartoon drawings on Air Asia flights. Do you remember that? We had Air Asia flights with um, light cartoons. That's part of licensing. So he licensed his cartoons there. So it changed format. It changed format from just to TV series, to merchandising, and now he has a cafe. Sharing and collaboration. Um, that's the interesting thing about IP rights. It's something that you can share. You can share out the cost, the cost, the cost in protecting it, the cost in getting the agreements drafted. You can share out the cost and um, you get the shared revenue too. So sharing and collaboration is something that's continuously being done. <clears throat> Generating license. Of course, licensing is also cross-licensing. And that's also not just relevant for the tech industry, also for creative meaning. For example, you want to license, you have a certain branding, you can license it to your partner and they have a certain like, a certain brand that you want. So they can license their branding to you. So it becomes cross-licensing without any money being transferred. Meaning that I have a certain brand that's good and you want to use it in your country. I want your brand to come into Malaysia. Let's do a cross-licensing deal. No money out. It's just you know sharing of brands. That can be done. So, okay, before I go into IP financing, um, this is part of the making money bit. Is there any questions? Any questions on, you know, what you should do? Yes, what? Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, I've been told to quickly wrap up. All right. No questions? How about selling? What to do? Fine? All right. Um, this is also part of what is interesting about IP rights. 
Um, I'm going to wrap this up in five minutes. I think that you know, if we don't, we see IP as something that's foreign. We cannot um, really understand it. I would like you to think as IP rights is similar to your property. Let's take your your house for example, right? That's your property. You can see it because it's something that is there, it's tangible, right? All of us have at least a house or a car, correct? If you have your house, if you have your house, you have to make sure that um, your house is in good condition so that you can at least, you know, if you buy the house for investment, for example, you can rent it out. You can, like, you can rent out rooms. You can rent out the entire house. You keep the house in good condition so that it appreciates in value and you can sell it in the next 10 years. You make sure there are no robbers that comes in and break into your house, correct? You want to make sure that no one comes, you know, and uh, deface your house or, you know, make your house, um, you know, devalue your house. So similar with IP rights. It is your right. It's a property. It's a property that's very similar to a house. You can make money from IP rights. And not only that, you can, you can wheel out your IP to your kids, to your family. You know that. IP rights is similar to that. So, you know, in the event of, you know, you moving on, it is something that you can leave to your kids. So, you'll find that there'll be interesting, um, I mean, from us, we know that there are a number of uh, big companies, the IP rights belong to the directors or the owners or the founders. It does not belong to the company. So, it's something that they can wheel out to the next of kin. So when it comes to IP financing, it's similar to that. Just like you want to put up your house for collateral, you can use IP as part of you know securitization. That means putting up IP um, to get financing from the banks, putting up IP to get uh, to convince um, VCs to invest in your company to get angel investment in. <clears throat> so IP based financing is not new. It's not new in. In the U.S., for example, it started, you know, from 1884, and there's all the other um, IP rights, you know, whether we, I'm sure you've heard of the Bowie bonds, Calvin Klein raising, you know, 58 uh, million. All this has, is something that is common there, where they use their creative rights to get financing. Because if I'm not wrong, most creative industry you wouldn't have, you know, big I mean, property as in, you know big um, factories or houses and things like that to put up as cholesterol, right? The things that you really have is your ideas and things that you have translated into content. These are the things that you want to put it up as financing. Okay, that's it. See? Less than five minutes. <laughs> Any questions? Any um, questions from the floor? Anything so far? Well, you'll be around for the afternoon, correct? Yes. So if anyone has any questions, yes. you don't mind them coming up to you directly? Yes. Um, and just to add, MIPO itself, because we are a government um, agency, we actually do a lot of um, awareness training, and it's mostly uh, free of charge. You only have to contact us. And even when it comes to IP rights filing, I know it sounds very difficult, especially uh, it sounds complicated because you know of the classes, of the documentation, and things like that. But we have certain days that we allocate that you can come in. Um, the our IP rights, I mean our copyright trademark officers will sit with you and do searches and assist you with the filing. So that again is at no cost. You know, so utilize this. It's part of I guess what you know incentives that the government is providing. So um, you only need to contact us even if you want to have a specific workshop. For example, you know get. 20 30, 20, 30 people that you want to know more about something, contact us and we can organize it. It is something that's part of our awareness to the public, to the riot. So it's something that we have, and again, all this is, you know, at no cost to you. Okay, thank making you very daunting, much. Our pleasure, we are making a daunting task very much easier. So I presume everything's available on your website, etc. Uh, most are. Okay, most are, yeah. so if they wanted to contact you. Thank you very much, sir. A big round of applause, please. Samira Musafa.